Good morning and magnificent Monday. Good morning on this magnificent Monday. Welcome to your most fabulous week. I am the Hill Vigil, women's empowerment business coach, founder and creator of the Empowerment Empire and your gracious host for this month's May Money Talks Mastermind. The May Money Talks Mastermind has been a phenomenal program that we host every year, this being the third, where we are speaking to gracious beautiful, phenomenal, inspiring women who are giving us insights, motivation, and a little bit more on how to grow our finances, build our wealth. Let's have the money conversations that many of us did not have around the kitchen table with our families. Let's open those doors and really dispel the myths that we can't really have the conversation of money as women business owners, as moms, as individuals, as people wanting to elevate their lives. I am super excited and very, very honored to be presenting our guest speaker for today, Ms. Dr. Forbes Riley. So very excited to have her joining us today. I am going to share with you a little bit about this phenomenal woman, and I hope that you all have some great experiences today with us. Let me turn off a couple of notifications. All right. Dr. Forbes Riley, known as the $2.5 billion business strategist, Forbes parlayed her TV and movie career into product and endorsement deals, along with being a pioneer in the field of infomercials and live home shopping Today, she is a global motivational speaker with online success trainings in the field of personal development, crafting perfect pitches, and building award-winning brands. We are going to be speaking with Dr. Forbes Riley about dream it, believe it, and achieve it in our magnificent show, encouraging you to open the doors to learning more about wealth building, money, finance, all things cash talk. Please welcome my wonderful guest, Dr. Forbes Riley. Oh, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that I come with my own applause. How are you this morning, my girl? I am doing so wonderful. How are you? Uh, just born amazing. Got to tell you, just got back from working with Muhammad Ali's wife on a project in Miami and just loving life. Phenomenal. Isn't it amazing the way that a life sort of unfolds when we are pursuing our dreams with gusto, with compassion, with- well, here's, here's the truth, life unfolds whether you're part of it or not. So if you don't step up and enjoy your own life, no one else gets to, you wanna tell me how horrible it is, go for it. There's two sides to every coin. I've been on both of them, I've had massive tragedy, and yet I'm still here and I'm thriving. So if you're stuck in a hole, you might wanna to listen to this presentation and figure out how to get out of it because that's not a way to live your life. Now, just in case people don't know who I am, if they ever see me on TV, can you see that screen? The yes, orange yeah. one? All right, so this is a little bit about me. Hang on. She's interesting. You've got five minutes. You've got the time for Riley. It's dynamic. She helps people. You've lost 140 pounds. She's eclectic. She's a storyteller. And I talk about her in the third person, but sometimes I can't believe that I get to be that person. Vegetables are in that one glass. That's actually good. I have made for you a gourmet panini, but it's so easy. <laughs> I love it. It's on the two billion dollar house. That's wild. Okay, so we're here at the Nature Center. This has been home for a very long time, like 25 years. Ago. That's showing right now how many minutes have been on air, how many have you sold. I think this is a number of 60,000. Oh, okay. Remember, I don't sell products. <laughs> I provide solutions. Big difference. Most people don't dream big enough. There's nothing worse than being like my dad, who had great inventions and no one ever saw them. This is my product, Forms Riley Spin Gym. Can you imagine fitness anywhere, anytime? The hardest thing in the world is to come up with a dream. Somebody has a vision that is so bizarre, you're gonna fall off the end of the earth, Christopher Columbus, don't do it. But he did. JFK said we're going to the moon. I think that's why I'm still here. The world needs me. Women need me. I think they need a role model. I think spin gym should be in everybody's car, at everybody's desk, in everybody's house. I never get tired of the reaction of a single person. <laughs> Amazing. It feels like really sexual. I love that reaction. 
I haven't met Oprah. Okay. But right now, I'm glad I met you. Yeah. yeah. I'll take that. And I think that says it all. I haven't met Oprah, but I have met you. So, yay! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We have been talking all month long with women from around the world who are sharing their insights, their expertise, their motivation to help your average woman building a business to get more comfortable talking about wealth building, money, and finance. It has been a phenomenal journey. This is our final week, and we have one of our great, great ladies here who can share some insight onto her experiences of growing this massive empire. We oftentimes talk about where we got started and how we kept going, even when the doors were shutting and the walls were falling down. How do we keep going and not be afraid? It's all a choice. Yeah. That and stop acting like a girl. Because girls cry, girls were joined like this. They used to make fun of girls, you know, running like a girl. Let me tell you something, women are freaking amazing. And when we understand it and start empowering each other and uplifting each other, and then I don't know about you, but I did you ever find that book that I we talked about called Life is Fair? And it must be under somebody's book, under somebody's bed somewhere, because everyone's always complaining, I don't, life isn't fair. There is no book called Life is Fair. Life is. Life is whatever you freaking make it. Um, bad things will happen to you? Absolutely. I raised a little boy for 12 years that my husband and I fostered uh, and he was murdered by another little boy in his neighborhood. My, he was the best man at my wedding and my, his picture, my wedding picture was on the cover of the LA Times. Not what you want to see. Bad things happen. Both my parents died within a year. I've had some crazy shit. My fiance was in a horrible motorcycle accident when, when uh, COVID first hit. How you deal with those things is what makes you who you are. But no one says you get to stop. You can if you want to. But so often, most people are only focused on the tiny little, uh, the tiny little part of the iceberg at the very top going, oh, look at them. They're lucky. Let me tell you something, life that I led has nothing to do with luck. Luck is about timing meets preparation. And I spent an entire life doing that. Now, now I, preach, I preach it. And one of the things that I talk, articulate is that how you communicate your level of clarity and then your confidence that comes from that is what will define how you function in a day, in a week, in a month, in a business. We often have, have been talking about how so many of us women who are you know, followers of our program are single moms. Women who over the course of the pandemic realized they needed to do something different because our children couldn't go to school. Um, there were no like sitters or places where we could put our children so we could still go to work. A lot of our offices were closing. So, so many of us, self-included, decided I'm going to venture out on my own, open the world wide web to my business and track my own path trek, you know, through whatever it is that was, you know, potentially stopping my path and just go right over it and keep moving forward. I want to meet my, see, I'm listening to the energy with which you're talking about these women and even yourself. How old are your kids? I have one daughter. She just turned nine. So the, even the energy with which you're talking. So during the pandemic, which we all went through, and by the way, if you pivoted for the first time during the pandemic, you haven't lived a life. That's <laughs> you pivoted a lot in your life and you will pivot a lot. That's goes without saying. And so I have two 19 year old twins who did their senior year upstairs in my house here. And I loved it. I thought it was the best thing. Now, I don't know if I would like little elementary school kids where you have to be homeschooling them, but we got through all that. My, they both graduated with A's and my daughter looked at me because I don't know how much your audience knows about me, but I've made a living doing infomercials and live home shopping. And I'm an actress. I'm in a movie at the moment uh, called on Amazon prime that you might want to check out if you're in the mood for something romantic and mushy. Always. Called, called Farm to Fork to Love. Oh, totally right up my alley. Which we shot during the pandemic, a lifetime kind of movie. And my daughter looked at me and said, Mom, you know, I've been doing internet marketing since I was 12 years old. I've taken it all. I mean, now this is how I raised my daughter. Uh, one year from school, I took her out of school for 50 days and she went to all of these conferences with me. She's been backstage when I spoke at 10X in front of 10,000 people. And she... I enrolled her into this whole world and she had a good passionate interest in it. <clears throat> her brother's different. He's a, you know, was a video game player and a straight A student and didn't want to travel as much. And she said, let's start a business about your coaching. I know you've always taught a little bit live and we sat down and in about three weeks, we crafted a thing called the ultimate pitch Academy, took it a webinar that I'd never done before. And the next morning after I did this live with about 25 people in class, I woke up in my little funnel thing and it said 25 K in it. And I said, McKenna, what does K stand for? And she said, mom, 
We made 25,000 last night. I'm like, oh wow. Within a month, she and I, now she's 18, okay? She has not graduated college. She doesn't even know anything about all about life like most people do, no. Within a month, we made our first 100K. She now has 15 people working for her, has decided why would I wanna to go to college because I can't, I'm, I'm paying all these salaries and I'm learning all of this. I can't stop to go to college. And in her first year in business before her 19th birthday, she grows $1.2 million. So while I hear the energy with what you're talking about, I have a very different take on life. If you're gonna be a millionaire, you've always needed to have at least seven streams of income. So anybody who chose to work for someone else as their only stream of income, decided to build someone else's dream. Oh wait, that's what you're taught in high school. And they didn't have me as a coach. And I'm not joking. So when my daughter's about 10th grade, uh, her high school teacher for the, called me in. She said, your daughter's being a little disruptive in class. I said, really? She said, yeah, we're, we're taking a, a computer class. We're learning how to do Microsoft resumes. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, why does she need a resume for it? So, well, because she needs a job after school. And McKenna's saying that she doesn't need a job. She's not going to get a job. And the teacher said, well, everyone's got to get a job. And I said, you know, that's a funny thing. I think she's right. She has no intention of getting a job. And the teacher's like, what? I said, well, let me ask you a quick question. You're not to be insulting. But how much money do you make as a teacher in a high school, public high school? Probably between 30 and 50,000. She was like, I said, my daughter made that last month. Why would she want a job? And the woman just looked at me like I had two heads. And I said, McKenna, don't be rude about this. But you're in a school that's training people to go work for other people. And she's like, I know, Mom, these people are going to work for me. I said, yes, they are. She's already hired college graduates and looks at me and goes, Mom, what do they teach them in marketing college? Because they're, I know, I'm teaching them about funnels and about processes and about systems and about CRM systems and how to organize your Google Doc. And she just created a five, five different trainings on her own. Nobody taught her how to build a curriculum. Her trainings are called GSD. You know what it stands for, my girl? It's just to get shit done. She looked at us and said, Mom, I don't understand what you guys do as grownups, but I've got to do eight different classes. I'm studying this and a foreign language and this. And I come downstairs and say, Mom, what are you doing? And you're like, Facebook. Really? And so she coordinated how to get, and she just realizes what, again, this is when she was a company, a book coming out called Every Company Needs a Kid. When she was eight years old, because she could see something in my business that none of us were seeing as a company, she saved my company $48,000. Now, I got to tell you something. She's smart. I'm not calling her a genius at all, but she got exposed to a world that a lot of the people who've been stuck in a job have never been exposed to and don't realize what's out there because of COVID. Now I have to tell you something. I launched a book. Hang on one quick second. I'll show you this. During COVID, I mean, there are things that I know to be true. One, it helps if you're an author. Two, it helps if you're an expert. I took 100 of my favorite authors, put them in a book. See this book? That would be me right there, called One Habit for Entrepreneurial Success. And I turned all of these authors into best-selling authors. Some of them were just, you know, regular people who had a dream. And within 18 days, we then created this book. Wait, wait. Now, the crazy story about this is the guy on the back of this cover with me, powerful man, he died of COVID. Wow. In I am very sad about that. I'm not saying that COVID was a fun thing to go through. But during that time, we all discovered the power of Zoom. Before COVID, I couldn't get 10 people on a Zoom call if I tried. And now I have hundreds of people on calls all around the world all the time. So my concern more is not that people don't know, but we train you to work for someone else. What did you do before, um, before, co before all this shifted for you? I was a project manager for the University of California at about five different campuses. Okay. And I'm sure that taught you amazing skills, but you also had a dream about what you wanted to do, correct? Correct. Right. So now where's the college, where's the institution that you go to learn how to be online, how to dream on your own? Oh, wait, there isn't one. There isn't one. <laughs> and that's what's fascinating to me. So yeah. I will tell you, because um, I do want to educate. We have a good amount of time together. That'd be okay if I help. I know you have questions for me, which I'm happy to answer. But I have, some, yeah, I have some fun things to teach. So, one of the things that I am passionate about is the concept of pitching. Now you pitched me to be on your show. And I said, yes, that's powerful because I don't always do these shows. I have a lot of things that I'm doing. I just got my doctorate. I did just get this. I have to hang Congratulations. Up. I got this. This is a lifetime achievement award from the president of the United States. I, I know, right? I have to put this, I have to hang it up, but right now I've been busy showing it to people. That's so cool. 
And I'll tell you what, I'm just this little girl from Long Island who's, well, I'll show you. Here's what I think that we all need to perfect. Whatever you've got in your head, your idea, your product, your service, you need to tell someone else about it. They need to enroll in this idea, right? Well, I call that a pitch. Now, pitching is not selling in my world. But bear in mind, the reason that I'm pretty well known in my world is I've hosted, created, and crafted 194 infomercials. In my time, those generated $2.5 billion. I didn't set out to do this. So <laughs> And then we also, even the energy with which you're talking about, I was a single mom, I get it. I also get that nobody ever defines me and I'll show you why, but there's things that you're doing to kill pitches. And for me personally, in my career, when I see a, a good product or a good idea and the person doesn't know how to talk about it, oh my God, it shatters my heart. All of you should have some network marketing partner. If you love a vitamin, if you love, I, have, I sell leggings, I, love, I live in yoga pants. So I sign on to a deal. If you go to Forbes Fitwear, well, I don't own Forbes Fitwear. I'm affiliated and I'll give you a $25 coupon if you want. <laughs> no, seriously, go to Share25. We all love leggings. And if you don't want to pay Lululemon prices, so I partner with this company. That's great. But how I'm pitching it is what matters. And everyone should have one of these. So this is my dad. My dad didn't graduate college, but that press behind him, he built and designed that. He had an engineering brain very smart man, but also goofy. <clears throat> he didn't understand business and did a little bit of self-esteem issue that I'm thinking about it. He was an inventor, loved to take apart things, and he was a magician and he loved his family. We have no other relatives. He had no sister, we just very small little family and it was kind of cute, but he was wacky. He used to take one of his inventions. Do I have it here? Oh, no, wait. It's a, it was a half a garbage can, a lawnmower engine and some paper machine. And he made me a Batmobile that went four miles an hour. We were the wacky family on my street. Right? And then I did magic tricks and we, it was just a very strange upbringing, right? If you went to his garage, it looked a lot like this. It had things everywhere, all these projects. And Behill, one day he sits me down and said, kiddo, I'm the oldest daughter. He said, how do I get my ideas out to the world? I said, dad, I have no idea. I'm eight years old. <laughs> but what happened is he got sick. He got cancer pretty quickly and he died. And all of the ideas that he had, they died with him. And it became apparent to me that I really have a desire to get people like my dad out to the world. And so that when infomercials came out, I joined that revolution and I created a lot of millionaires. Home shopping was my world too. You could take a product, somebody's idea, and that graveyard is filled with a lot of ideas, a lot of unwritten books, a lot of dreams that people did not have the courage to pursue. Shame on them. Yeah. And I don't want that to happen. I really don't. And so I crafted, and I've been doing this for a while. I just turned 62. This is Cindy Bell. Now listen to how Cindy defines the word pitch. She's one of my students. And I love this because I want you all to stop thinking about the sales, but crafting the verbal pitch. Okay. So this is a course on how to master your pitch, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm discovering is that every single minute of my day is a pitch. Everything, my interaction with my children, that is a pitch. And it's, it's causing me to rethink and reprogram my thoughts, my words, my behavior. Everything is aligning and changing because of my new understanding of really what a pitch is. It's not just this one dimensional, it's a pitch to you know sell your product or sell your coaching business. It is a new way of living. That's what I'm getting from this. I can have anything I freaking want, especially with my husband, because I am really learning how to pitch the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is what we are doing. We are, I, I am, I mean, I've been pitching forever. That's what you do on home shopping. You have right. to go out in front of potentially 85 million people with a host, co-host that you don't rehearse with. And you're required to sell between two and five thousand dollars a minute of whatever you're pitching or they send you home well i did that for 30 years in five different countries i'm pretty good at this pitch thing right i would say so but i didn't know that <clears throat> i would have been very happy just being an actress it's a little bit of a crazy story <clears throat> how i discovered this this calling so a lot of your listeners would love to make a million dollars in a year right of course. Way, my dad made a million dollars in a lifetime just to be clear can you imagine making a million dollars in a month? Well, people do that. 
That means you only made $12 million and you know companies make a lot more than that. I think Jeff Bezos makes 12 million a, mo- a minute or something ridiculous when you're a billionaire. But I grossed 1.2 million in a day. <clears throat> How do you think you did that? Well, I spent a lot of time in this home shopping world. So if you see this, this was a product that I did with Serena Williams. See this little cool towel? Somebody had a crazy idea to make a hollow fiber garment towel and you would get it wet, you'd snap it and it would get colder. So you can imagine if you're out on a boat or a golf course or the gardening, it might be a fun thing to have. But they did not know how to convey this on television. So they came to me and said, do you have any ideas? I said, I always have ideas, it's what I do. And so, and being a magician helped too. So you see this little silver thing of water? I said, let's put a hot thing of water in there and let's grab a heat thermal gun. And so I would put the little cloth into the water ouch, ouch, ouch. And it would say, oh, 175 degrees. Then I would go snap, snap, snap three times. And then the heat gun would go 175, 145, 125, 95, 75. Oh my God, this thing is cold. Do you see this number down here? 48,264 sold. In what, 17 seconds? No, no, no. We have 17 seconds left to go. In this was one day, this is called a today special where you go on for 24 hours. I sold $55 million in three summers. Then I had a crazy idea, which I do not recommend that you have crazy ideas, but I did. (laughs) Because I know the price that I paid with my life for pursuing something that nobody else believed in. And I fought very hard. And so hopefully at some point there'll be a documentary about having to fight US customs about being on a reality show and having to make me cry about how I work with people who are in wheelchairs and veterans with a little thing that looks like a toy. I just posted a video on YouTube and sure enough, this guy going, it's a toy. Let me share something with you all. George Foreman, one of the greatest boxers, jump rope is a toy. Lance Armstrong, tour de force bicycle is a toy. Christy Yamaguchi gold medal Olympic skates are a toy. It's irrelevant what this is, it's what it does. First of all, this thing spins at 125,000 RPM and it works. I have sexy arms and abs because of this. So you can argue with me all day long. I've sold two and a half million of these things. Hello. So I, and nobody wanted it. I went through hell for five years. I mortgaged my house and my kids' education. If it didn't work, I'd be living in a box with two kids. Don't kid yourself. This was not easy. It's only easy when I look back on it or you look at me now. But going through it, Freaking hell. Mortgaging a half a million dollars, hoping that the container coming from China doesn't sink in the ocean and my entire inventory goes away. Or when U.S. Customs seizes it because it's made out of metal and gives me a hard time for two weeks and charges me $50,000 for their inspection product. Let me tell you something. I didn't say your dream was easy. It's just worth it when you do it. So if we go here, these two guys, this is Barb. She's in her 60s. She's been doing it for three years, has the sexiest arms. Henry is 58. Do you see that number that I sold in this one day? That says 55,344. I want you to think of a football stadium. Look at all those seats. That means every one of those people in one 24 hour period bought my product that nobody wanted. Oh my God. In that day, by the way, I ended up selling 64,000 at the end of the day. A couple weeks later, I got home and I got a check for $1.2 million. Holy what? I wish my parents were here to watch this because it's unlike anything you've ever seen. Now, it's primarily because I understand this pitch concept and now I teach other people to do this because it comes down to the art of persuasion. And as a woman, we're very good at persuading people what we want. I think we just forget how powerful we are because we also want a lot. No more whining. How about we begin with the end in mind, figure out what we want and go get it. And there's all kinds of ways to go get it, but articulating it, here's five secrets, by the way. Behold, you should write this down and share this with everybody. Yeah. Stop saying these five things. Stop saying basically, actually, like, you know, and um. Um, well, I got a, um, like this, this is my new, my new, um, my, this is like my ear. What are you talking about? Get it together. The next thing, stop saying the word trying. You either do it or you fail. And when you fail, you learn lessons or I'm trying. Oh, I tried. I don't care what you think you did. Did you do it? Did you not do it? Owning up to this, taking responsibility for who you are 
in this life is very different if you want success. So my goal and what I've been doing for the last couple of years is I, I didn't work this hard teaching, by the way. I was very happy just being an actress and hosting shows, but I teach now. And that's what got me a doctorate. And I preach and I talk about clarity, communication. Nothing is keeping you from this, but you. Oh, oh, I have the power to shift this? Yes. Yes, said the Wizard of Oz. You have the power inside of you all along. And with this comes what I think women lack most. And that is confidence. Yeah. And it's because we are put down. We're told, we're, I mean, I've been told I was a second class citizen. I, I've heard everything you can imagine. So as a woman of a certain age, I'm here to empower other women because when you get confidence and I want you to pass this on to your sons and daughters, you start to make more money. I'm living with two teenagers who have grossed a million dollars each. Wanna how they did it? They hung out with their mom. I didn't let them listen to other people. Not a joke. Because the truth is whether you believe that you can or you can't, you're right. I gave, a, I gave a speech all weekend. I was hanging out with Muhammad Ali's wife and a beautiful woman comes up to me. She was so inspired by my speech. And she said, oh, I wanna be an actress, but I'm just, I don't really know anybody. I don't know what to do. And I, I'm like, so who cares? I didn't know anybody. Well, but I'm also dyslexic. I said, so Tom Cruise is dyslexic. What do you, why did you, I just met you. Why are you telling me your limitations? Why? And she looked at me like I had two heads. I said, you're beautiful, you're young. I don't envy you. Being an actress is hard no matter who you are, what size, color, shape you are. But go for your dream until you can't go for it anymore. But you dumped all your garbage on me. I wouldn't hire you either. If you're listening to me and that's what you do, let's knock it off. And if you don't know how, I teach a, I teach a three-week training that I do. I love doing this. Or find another coach, but find somebody. By the way, if you don't have a coach, you're not in business. They don't teach you that when you're an employee, you have a boss. I don't have a boss. God's my boss. My kids are my boss. My internal rhythms are my boss, but nobody cares if I get out of bed or not. I'm my own boss. I do whatever I want. That also means some days I work 32 hours a day. Don't kid yourself. Some of this is not as easy as you think. So for me, it happened by accident, although there are no accidents. So life has its own path, right? Right. If you look up, if you go to YouTube, and type in my name, you'll see lots of movies and lots of TV. And I just wanted to be Julia Roberts career. But one day I walked into an audition. It was a camera like there is right now. A pen was sitting on the desk and it said, sell the camera this pen. To which I had a very weird reaction. I hate selling. Absolutely. I hate it. It's like, I've got clothes in my closet. Maybe you do too. That some little girl sold me. Oh, that looks great on you. I got home going, no, it doesn't. It looks terrible. I knew it looked terrible. Why did I buy it? Right? You got sold. I don't like sold. So I said, you know, funny thing about pens. When I got to college, I was only 16 years old. I was pretty smart. I skipped a grade. And my mom used to write me longhand notes every day in pen. I would run to the mailbox. There they were in purple ink with a big love mommy. And I go, oh. And I realize a pen like this can actually reach out and touch somebody's heart. Wow. J That's what I did. Jake of Body by Jake. He was a big infomercial guy. Uh oh, my camera just went off. I don't know why my, 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 can you see my screen? Yep, I can still see your screen. Um, but my, there it is. And here's the thing. It was the early 90s. Cable television had just started. And he offered me a job to pitch, to write the pitches on this 24-hour network about fitness. Now, I'm going to give your, all your women a little inside tip here. You're going to see a video in a second. I was always overweight. My mom was overweight. It was a hard thing for us. She was 260 pounds my whole life. I never looked like a fitness person. Even though I was a dancer, I had big thighs that touched and I got bullied for that. When he offered me this job, there were a lot of fitness girls running around in bra tops with great abs. But I decided I was not gonna let that stop me. So in this, I want you to watch what I'm wearing. I designed these special jackets that would cover my butt because it was too big and no one ever saw my abs. And it just allowed me to be confident enough to pitch. So watch this. Total fitness, total convenience, 24 hours a day. Now get ready for the latest in sports, fashion, and exercise gear on Fitness Plus. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and today we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and that, by popular demand, the best way to develop rock-hard abdominals. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. 
Now, if you want to burn calories and tune your whole body, all in the comfort and privacy of your own home. So I'm feeling my thighs work. I love this. The pads close against the flywheel. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. Today, we're introducing you to the most diversified, balanced, and personally designed workout for the 90s. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and joining me to explain how you can have gorgeous, more youthful looking. So I wrote the pitch for every single product that you see here. 1,500 of them over five years. Wow. As I'm looking at all my jackets now, I'm realizing, because I, I needed to be confident in spite of the fact that I didn't have the world's greatest body, I made a lot more money than all the cute fitness models did. And then I went on live to tape and we sold, we sold products on television. No one was doing that back in the early 90s. And then Jake, Total. that's Jake of Body by Jake, sold this entire network to Fox Television for $500 million in 1993. Wow. At that same time, infomercials were just beginning. I was in the right place at the right time with the right skill. Let's face it, if American Idol had launched, you wouldn't know who I am because I don't sing. But this was my time. And I did lots of infomercials. Now, I don't know if you recognize the guy in the middle. His name is Jack LaLanne. The Jack LaLanne, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an infomercial that I had just given birth to my twins. I have a little bit of a belly, but who cares? Watch this. For over 50 years, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a couple of living, breathing testimonials to the wonders of juicing, Elaine and Jack LaLanne. Hello. Jack, oh, how, how are you? How are you, Elaine? I'm going to hug, too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Look at you guys. Well, okay. <laughs> you know, I was with you on television 34 years, and you know what I told you was the gospel's truth? And I had one thing in my mind, trying to help you to feel better, look better, so you can live longer. And today, of all the things that I've ever done and recommended, I want you to hear about our Jack LaLanne Power Juicer. I'm so doggone excited about this, I can hardly sleep at night, because I know what it's That's going true. to do for you. And do you hear that pitch? I know what it's going to do for you. Very rarely when I meet people who are pitching, do they ever talk about you? Who We did not know this one commercial shot in Toronto, Canada would go on one conversation, would play 400 times a week here in the United States. Wow. For over 50 years. It would gross a billion dollars. It would air for eight years, one show, all around the world, 80 countries, changed his life and mine. He sadly passed away about seven years ago. I'm still friends with his wife. She's 96 years old. And I think she is still going because she's the happiest person I know. And they tell me that I changed their entire life and I became part of history. Kind of cool, right? So Forbes, if pitching is not selling, what is it? Well, it's this well thought out conversation, very engaging, designed to do one thing, <clears throat> and that's to get a yes. When you pitch me to be on your show, when you pitch all the people to be on your show, you got what? A yes. I got yeses. Yeah, I know. That's how it works. Now, if you gotten a no, you might've gone on to somebody else because no means never ending opportunity. I love that. I, I, and it's true. I think about the three secrets of what I'm doing here and what I teach is that you need to excite people. Did you hear what Jack yeah. said? He said? I'm so doggone excited about this. <laughs> you know, when people pitch me sometimes, they're boring. As energy. Well. Yes. Got to have that good energy going. Thank you. Yes. Then you got to be engaging. Come on, guys. Come play with me. Listen to me. I want you to, I got something really cool for you. And the final thing is you have to be willing to enroll them. And that's because you know what you've got is so valuable that if they don't get it, their life won't be so good. Yeah. But never sell them. You never tell them. You never tell them what they need. And I'll tell you what, it's a very different way of living. One of the problems that most entrepreneurs face is that they are so busy telling somebody what they need. Well, you know, you need my little workout pants or you need my vitamins. No, the secret to what I do is I get you to want what I have. So think about this for a second. I have a product in my hand, right? <clears throat> Via, will you raise your arm for me for a sec? Will you touch the bottom of your arm? Does it feel really tight or a little wiggly? Because summer's coming and you're gonna take that outfit <laughs> off, right? It could be tighter, let's okay. say that. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna tell you what it should be. If you think it could be, I agree with you because when you wear a little strappy dress, you don't want it to wiggle. Right. What if I told you that in five minutes of doing this, because it spins so fast, and then you do the other side, and if I told you that, I do this at the desk every day for about five minutes. Here's a little bag that comes in, it's so darn cute that you could tighten and tone those like two to three inches tighter in less than a month. Do you want this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'll tell you, you go to shop Forbes Riley and you go get one, but do you notice how you all of a sudden want my product? 
Yeah, because you 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 put it into context over how it would fit my life and you know, feeding into the fact that I know that I want my underarms to be a little tighter. And so you provide a solution. Bingo, but that's what everybody does. So let me tell I mean, give me an occupation. You've met lots of people. Give me somebody struggling in your life. What might they be doing for a living? Um, a new client of mine is getting into the financial services industry. She's wanting okay. to sell financial products. Okay, so if I met her and I asked her, what do you do? Here's what she'll tell me. I help people get financially solvent. That's what, or, or I help people, whatever. The words I help are irrelevant. They're not very engaging. And I have a whole different way that I teach people to when you meet someone to get a yes. So let's play with you for a second, my girl. Put you okay. on this, everybody's good. Right. What do you do? I meet you at a party, what do you do? I provide women's empowerment business coaching to women who want to create a more solid foundation and grow their business. Now, why did you tell me that? Because you asked me. Yeah, see, I don't hear that question that way. Hmm. What, I, what I gave you was an opportunity to enroll the listeners. I didn't really care what you do. Most people, when they ask you that question, they don't care. They care what you can do for them. Now they don't say it that way they because it would be really rude but vihil if i asked you the question hi nice to meet you what can you do for me what would you say i can help you make sure your foundational documents are in place so you can grow your business all right so just now do me a small favor i'm going to ask you the first question you're going to give me the second answer and see how this new puzzle fits together okay so the second answer you just gave i'm going to ask you to say that what you just said Hi, so what do you do? Well, I can help you get your foundational documents all in order so you can grow your business. What a much better answer, isn't it? That's a different way. Now I care what you do. Before you're like, well, I help women do blah, blah. No, Forbes, I'll tell you what. I know you're a busy working woman. I got to tell you, I can get your financial docs. I'll bet they're not all where they need to be. I'd love to set up a meeting. Are you in? The answer is yes. All of a sudden, in 10 seconds, we have a business arrangement. Pitching. I like the are you in. Yeah. But not, you're not going to be able to say that from the first answer. And I have people all the time going, well, Forbes, you asked me. I said, okay, listen to politicians. When you ask a politician a question, I worked for a state senator for a while. They, all, they don't care what the reporter asked them. They have an agenda. As soon as it's just a platform to start speaking and start enrolling people to vote for them. They know this. Business owners don't. Yeah, I got a lot of mic drops. It's how I got to be where I am. And, and, I'm not teaching this. and it's, it's just a slight shift, just a slight, because I think when we are talking about the business services that we're offering, the solutions that we're providing, I think we, we start tripping over the words that we want to say, as opposed to just talking about the solutions. Well, it's, we it's actually not a slight shift. That's like saying losing 10 pounds is just, you know, changing your eating. Now it's okay. a little bit more than that. And it's very foundational. And it is why I teach what I do. And it takes weeks or months of practice because just giving you my grandmother's recipe for the best brownies in the world, you won't be able to make them the way she does because you haven't practiced. You haven't added the nuance. It, it's, not, it's not as obvious as black and white. Now that's one lesson. But there's a lot of other things that have to be changed and shifted to really execute this. So I, I have a five-step formula that I now call the ultimate pitch formula. I just rolled out a new training we do that's all on, it's on Facebook groups, which is crazy, a new way to teach. Yep. And I talk to people about, because that's the beginning of the conversation. I have a thing called springboard stories. How do you emotionally get vested in who you're talking to very quickly? What is the relatability factors? Why do I want to learn from you? Why do I believe that you're the one to handle my papers? Why don't I want to go to somebody who's older and maybe doesn't have kids or is a man or you're going to lay down for, there's a whole lot of things and you have to hit all of these things to make a pitch stick. And so it's relatability factors, springboard, the hub, the grid and assumptions. The first time you answered the question, you were not talking to me. And I find that weirdly not, don't take this the wrong way, but I find it weirdly disrespectful. So it's a funny thing. Give me an occupation. Finance manager. Oh, get out of the world of finance. Go into something goofy. <laughs> That's my background. <laughs> let's say, okay, um, let's do nail salon. 
How about a new lady? Ask me what I do. So what do you do? Hi, Forbes. Nice to see you again. What do you do? Tell me again. Oh, I'll tell you what. When you know when you extend your hand and you shake your hand with somebody, have you ever noticed that when they're long and sexy, how you get a like a better handshake? Oh, I, yeah. I design the most unique nail patterns. <laughs> right. I that's what I do. I like my claw. I, right. I make these look super sexy. Really? Well, how do you do that? Oh, and then I would start to talk about what I do. Or if you ask the old way, ask me again. Hi. So tell me a little bit more about what you do. I own a nail salon. Yeah, that just kind of ends the conversation. It's it, not engaging. <clears throat> and then the other person's left to go, well, tell me something. I have a way that if you're willing to open the door, here's another way. Okay, this is a great thing. So I've got a fitness product, right? Mm-hmm. I have a 90 second pitch for this. I teach people to be affiliates of mine. And so let's assume you and I are sitting, I was on an airplane this morning, right? And I'm going to turn to you and ask me what I do. Hi, good morning. What do you do? Well, I created the greatest fitness product on the planet. Do you want to see it? Uh, sure. If I'm sitting on an airplane and you're going to show me the greatest fitness thing. Oh, on the planet? Let me tell you something. If you're sitting in a sauna, standing at Starbucks or a grocery store line, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to turn to you and say, well, okay, so you want to see something cool? Again, you're going to say yes again, right? Of course. I'm going to say, give, me your thumb, give me your thumbs. I'm going to put this on your thumb and I'm going to make you do this. And I'm not going to say anything. And all of a sudden you're going to say to me, oh my God, I so feel this. This is amazing. How do I get one? And I made a sale. In that particular case, I didn't tell you that I'm in the National Fitness Hall of Fame. I didn't talk about that it spins at 125,000 is made at, all I did was say, you want to see something cool? Give me your thumbs. So pitching is an art. It is a freaking art that needs to be practiced and integrated into who you are. And when you nail it, you will add a zero to your income easily. Just saying. So that is what I do. Um, You know what? I'm going to take a second here and I'm going to go back. And I think that lesson is very valuable. And I think either I have a free gift or a way for you guys to come. I I teach this in a $19 class. And then I have a three-week program. Now, here's the thing I want to share with you, though. I've been teaching live all since the pandemic started. And then my team had me to start record my trainings. Live, like I just coached with you, is probably one of the best things that I do for people. But Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop doing this because I was doing 40 to 50 hours a week, and it's a little exhausting. And so if anybody does want to train with me live at the moment, reach out to me. Just go to ForbesRiley.com and look up what I do. Because I'm enjoying this. I teach in very small classes. I speak on very large stages. But I discovered that just talking to auditoriums of people is not fulfilling to me. Yeah. What I personally like is I like seeing that look on your face. And so I invest hours every week. I'm doing less and less. But it's been fun watching you transition, watching you become a role model for your child. And there's so many beautiful parts to this. But so let me go back for a second. Because, again, you're seeing the tip of an iceberg. Everyone says, well, Forbes, good for you. You know, you do all these things. Well, let me share something with you. I, and you should write this down if you're listening to this, but you are the sum of the obstacles you overcome. So I want to go back and say this that you see here had nothing to do with luck. This had to do with a lot of hard work. I started out, I did have two loving parents, which is a very strong advantage. A lot of people don't. Doesn't mean you can't overcome that, but it was a good foundation for me. Because as I grew up, I was eight years old, and two things happened. One, I got hit in the face with a baseball bat, and it broke my nose, and my parents didn't fix it. The second thing is, and maybe you can appreciate this, my parents were hoarders. My, they kind of grew up during the Depression era. My mother saved the mold of my teeth. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Does that look like a horror, like Halloween joke? <laughs> yeah. So that was my teeth. And in this picture, you can see that a little bit. I had an orthodontist from hell put me in a full set of braces when I was eight years old and then put every kind of equipment in my mouth to change my jaw for two years. That lived in my mouth when I talked like this for two years. So can you imagine your little daughter can't talk? It was a very hard thing growing up. I was overweight, I had a big broken nose, I had frizzy hair, and by all popular standards, I was ugly. And I was very shy, and I knew I was very smart. I had no friends. No, it's not a joke. I spent a lot of time watching movies and TV. And then if it wasn't bad enough, my dad 
slipped one day when I was about 15 years old, <clears throat> got his hand caught between some of those rollers and it ripped off the front of his hand. And he would then spend three years in the hospital, 15 operations, my entire high school was not spent dating or going to cheerleading thing. I knew any of those things. I went to see my dad in the hospital. Well, one day my mom comes to me and she says, kiddo, we don't have any money for college. We're totally broke because my dad was the breadwinner and you don't have any scholarships and, 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 oh, but then she said, oh, wait, but there's this beauty pageant that's happening. It's coming to town. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. The Miss Teenage America pageant. And we both looked at me going, yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay. Thank you, mom, for also thinking I'm not pretty. Well, here's the funny thing. The word dream it, believe it, achieve it. So I had a dream I was going to college. We talked about this in front of my dad's doctor and he turned to my mother and said, hey, I would like to offer to fix your daughter's nose. It's really bad. She breathes not well and it, she could use this. And I'll, it, you, you've been through so much. And so he did, didn't think anything of it. Except about a week later, something happened. I got a little prettier. My little nose opened up and I could all of a sudden see my eyes and my smile that was upside down and kind of awkward turned right side up. And I was like, huh? And I looked in the mirror and I said to my mom and dad, I said, I'm going to borrow a bridesmaid's dress. I'm going to enter this pageant because there's a scholarship and I don't know how else I'm getting to college. And I walked into a room and there were 500 girls there. And I said, one of these little girls is going to go to NBC television in Tulsa, Oklahoma with Bob Hope. And damn it, it's going to be me. Now, they still don't say it's only a good story because that night I won. I won the Miss Teenage New York. Now, it took three weeks to do this, but I won. I, there in the middle of the mall wearing my hand-me-down blue bridesmaids dress. And I got off to go down to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there I am with Bob Hope at 16 years old in a national competition. Oh, my God. I manifested my one little. How did that happen? Well, here's the funny thing. I didn't win. It wasn't a good experience because I was from New York and this was in the middle of the seventies in Oklahoma and all the little girls who like do pageants for a living. I'm like, yeah, I have the funniest accent I ever heard. And I think I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm an accent. I was like, whoa, like I did not even miss congeniality. I grew up from New York, but I'm talking like this. I'm like a truck driver. <laughs> they did not like me very much. They did not, it wasn't me. It was, I wasn't very social. I was a little socially awkward. I'd never really been out in public or had, so it, but it taught me to help other people who don't fit in, find their way. And what happened was I did get to go to college. I did win a scholarship and there's my mother who was always overweight. And I remember saying to myself, mom, I love you very much in my head, but I'm not going to look like you. And that's one of the reasons I'm in the fitness industry because I worked really hard to have a body that my mom never did. And then you mentioned something. We talked about your name and my name. So a little background. When my dad was growing up, he was Jewish in the 50s, him and his brother. My grandmother could not get them into engineering school with the last name of Feinstein. They were not accepting Jews. She said, that's not good enough for me. She opened the yellow pages, went down the F's and said, okay, that's it. Your new last name, my boys, is Forbes. So I was born Francine Forbes. That name means a lot to me. It means not, it means pursuing without fitting in, taking your own stand for things. And then many years later, I was dating a man named Riley and I went to an image consultant because I I'd broken my knee. I was a very low point in my life. And he looked at me and he said, we need to change your name. Francine is a very old name. I think your name should be Forbes Riley. And I said, what's a Forbes? What is that? It sounds like a law firm. <laughs> but I, but when you get a coach, he said to me, you need to cut your hair and get it colored. You need to change the colors of the clothes that you're wearing. You need to understand what looks good on your skin tone. And I did everything that he said, because when you enroll with a coach, do everything that they say. And I created a woman named Forbes Riley. And when I went home to my boyfriend who had not yet asked me to marry him, but I was taking his last name, he looked at me and he said, wow, Forbes Riley, that's who you are. And for the last 32 years, I've grown into the name and the look and the drive, and it changed my entire life. Love it. It's, I think, clearly telling us that you, you are not the product of your circumstance. 
you create your life intentionally create your life and be the person you want to be not what everyone else might think or assumes but who do you want to be well i think i discovered i discovered the word permission we are denied permission hundreds of times by the time we get to first grade mom can i not eat my food i don't want to eat my vegetables mom and you hear no 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 a lot you don't hear a lot of yeses you hear a lot of no's and i'm a huge fan of the wizard of oz and that movie is about permission you got four people who went through hell to get a heart a brain courage and to go home and it turns out the great wizard was not a wizard at all but a pretty smart little carnival barker who said, guys, I don't know what the big deal is. You always have that inside of you. And they're like, what? So he granted them permission. I call it Forbesing it. Can you see that? I can. I say that if you want to manifest something in your life, go for it. But be prepared that people will tell you that it's not going to happen. That's been my whole life. People told me what I couldn't do. And I said, I, I Forbesed it. And that is exactly what's happened. I love when people say, oh, Forbes, you're such an out of the box thinker. Want to hear my response to that? What box? What box? What? what, What's I don't know. What box? I don't see a box. I've never seen a box. Why does there have to be a box? Well, that's what everybody thinks there is. And that's unfortunate. So people buy into this bullshit of a box. I've created miracles in my life because I don't see the box. I never did. Um, And, you know, there's enough of us now that you can find like-minded people, even the, you know, what we're listening to here. If you want to achieve whatever your dream is, it takes thought, forecasting, planning. You know, my fiance and I just went to uh, Dubai and the world's tallest building there. We stayed in the hotel at the bottom of that. And everybody always does this. Wow, look at that. You know what I do? Wow, look at that. I'm looking to the foundation. You only can build a tall skyscraper when it's solid and it works. And so I decided that I wanted to be one of the greatest female speakers of our time. Well, who the heck am I, right? Well, I'll tell you what, you put enough work, time and dedication, and this just happened. I gotta tell you, this has been four months in the making and a lifetime to actually get here. When I heard her story, it just touched my heart. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. She brought the house down. So all I'm going to tell you for all the men and women who are listening to your program and what we're doing today is that the journey is the journey. You may get degrees, you may get $1.2 million checks. You, how about the journey of having a baby? I remember a time when I wanted to have a baby. Well, they're teenagers now. I didn't say I wanted teenage. Oh my God. The journey <laughs> is the journey. There is no end to that. It's not like they get to a certain age. You're like, I win. They're eight. I'm good. <laughs> They're married, I'm good. Man, grandbaby. There is no end to that. And I think that's the crazy thing is that you're not going for a brass ring. You're going for a life well led of ups and downs and the downs, how you handle the downs define who you are. Because if you expect that life, you just go like this. That's a, that's a crappy roller coaster. I've had huge highs and with huge highs come huge lows. And it's all the time. Just when you think you've got it all, somebody's liable to, you know, kick you in the teeth. <clears throat> it's all kind of things that will happen to you. And be prepared for those. It's like buying life insurance for your own life. Because it will happen. So just know that you should store away enough energy for the days that you're sick and can't go to work. Okay, how do I handle this? Or God forbid somebody's in an accident. How do you handle this? And I don't think that we get taught this. Who teaches us how to handle life? I got through school. Actually, I graduated college with two degrees in three years. I learned a lot, not nothing. I didn't learn how to balance my checkbook, how to make dinner, how to have personal relationships, how to deal with life. 
Yeah. Where do you get that education? So that's what I've created. I know you've got a beautiful tribe of people. I've had 12,000 students join my, my world since we started two years ago. I have a Facebook group as well. It's a private group. It's free. And it's called the Millionaire Maker Inner Circle. I have 5,600 people there. Those 5,600 have all been through my training. We all talk alike. We think alike. We're supportive of each other. And I created a community because I wanted a community. I wanted people that I liked hanging out with, people who are achieving it, people who don't whine, people who don't say the phrase, I don't know, and just get shit done. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's what I talk about is the reason why I was actually, you know, glad that everyone was forced to go on a Zoom because this is how I spend most of my time. And it, I wanted to surround myself with like-minded thinkers, women who were not afraid to pull back the curtain on all the I can't and shoulda, coulda, what is, and just did it. And stop talking about not being able to do it, but like creating the change in their lives that they want. Yep, yep, and yep. Yeah. Forbes Riley, it has been a true honor and a great pleasure. Thank you for sharing your story, your great impact with us. It is a true honor for all of the amazing women who are participating here in the International Women in Business, May Money Talks Mastermind. Know that it starts with you, not with what you can't do or what you should do or what you're thinking about doing. It starts with you doing. So if anything, out of today's most amazing conversation with Forbes Riley, make sure that you are living a life well-led. Yes. All right. And if you want to reach out to me, just go to ForbesRiley.com. Find me on social media. Ask how I can help you. I do a lot of these amazing things of giving away my time, of creating miracles, and I am here to serve for the rest of my life. Thank you so much for connecting with us and for for accepting my pitch to be on the program. I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Bye, darling. Ciao.